Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Marketing 101 podcast for small business owners. My name is Philippa Channer. I am the host here from Channer Consulting in Montgomery County, Maryland. And this month we have been talking about just ways that businesses can really market their business, small, small businesses, market to the local area on a shoestring budget, ways to connect and still get our message out there, even if we don't have a large budget. And along those lines, I was introduced to Mickey Kennedy. Uh, he's the founder and the president of eRelease. It's a small, it's a small business leader for press release distribution. And he's actually celebrating 24 years of business. And right. so he's an expert in helping small businesses really increase their visibility and their credibility. And so he's t- here today to share some valuable insight with us. So thank you for being here, Mickey. Oh, thanks for having me. Yes, of course, of course. So I'm going to ask you twice, just in case uh, some of our listeners drop off. Um, I want to make sure they know how to get and talk to you. So if you can share more about your business and how people can reach you, and then we'll do it again at the end. Okay. So our, our website is ereleases.com. Um, we have chat and uh, a phone number where actual editors answer the phone or respond to you. There's no salespeople or commissions. Uh, we specialize in press release distribution and uh, uh, we're able to give you distribution over the wire uh, at a very small price compared to what the wire itself charges. And uh, I do have a free uh, strategy course on how to build a PR campaign of newsworthy mm-hmm. press releases. And anybody who's considering it, it's a great place to start. And it's at ereleases.com forward slash plan, P L A N. And again, it's completely free. Awesome. I am going to check that out myself because I'm always looking to learn and get out there. I've just now started doing a little bit, some press releases for myself. So I'm sure I have a lot to learn still. Thanks. Awesome. So now I understand too. What, before we get into today's topic, what um what introduced you or what draw draw you to the uh, the field of public relations and, and so my background is actually poetry. I uh, got an MFA in creative writing with an emphasis in poetry in grad school, and I just assumed I'd wait tables, but I did that for a summer after graduating. And it was brutal on my body, my knees, my ankles, my back hurt. And I was so zapped at the end of the day, I, I couldn't read or write poetry. So I was like, I need a safe office job. And so I got hired at a telecom research startup as employee number three. And one of the things they wanted to do was to have someone send out press releases. And they said, you're the writer, figure it out. And so I, I did. Uh, and I sent out the releases we faxed at the time. And a lot of journalists started to call and say, could you email me the press release? Because it's easier to work with the numbers that we were publishing uh, by copy and pasting in Word or something like that. So um, that gave me the idea for email releases, e-releases. And yeah. uh, I got started doing that, just building a database and sending uh, press releases to journalists. And uh, over the time, like I said, the Newswire approached us and said we should offer them. And I pointed out that they charged twelve to $1,400 to move a 500-word release nationally. And surprisingly, they didn't go away. They said, well, we really like that you serve small businesses and entrepreneurs and startups and people like that. So, you know, we're willing to find a way to make it work, which we have. Okay. And I see you're in the Baltimore area? Yes, uh, Baltimore County, Maryland. Okay, perfect. Can you, like if I have a client that's in California, will they be able to participate in your services as well? Are you kind of geographically located and support Maryland? Uh, I am predominantly uh, national and international. We work with people all over. Um, About a third of the people that appear on Shark Tank use us to issue their press release before they go on uh, their episode airs. And the producers recommend that they do that. And uh, they often will mention us by name as a suggestion. So that's really nice. Um, And uh, so you could be located anywhere. It's completely virtual, uh, you know, service, but uh, we are there to hold people's hands and walk them through the process and explain the uh, opportunities of, of PR and hopefully how to do it uh, well so that you will get responses. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. I love this. So now that we've talked about some small business, you mentioned, you know, you're serving small business. I want to start with, you know, why is local media coverage so important for our small business owners? Uh, 
you know, right. whether they're serving locally or if they're ser- serving internationally. Right. So I think for a lot of businesses, there is a local market that they serve either predominantly or in part, like even e-releases, even though we're national and international, we do serve uh, locally. And it's just a really great way to get local uh, media attention that can potentially drive more eyeballs and potentially more customers to you. And the thing about local media is it's not a hard nut to crack. You don't need to pay a service like e-releases to get uh, local media pickup. It's really, you're building a Rolodex of people in your local area who would cover you. And it's probably less than 10 people. So I feel like that's an assignment that's very easy. You know, maybe it's six people that you're going to end up finding, but you're going to look at your local paper and uh, determine who generally covers your industry and reach out and ask for that person's email address. And, you know, they'll, they'll give it to you because they don't try to hide who they are. They're members of the community and they're looking for news and news tips. Um, and um, you may also, if you're fortunate enough to have a business magazine or a business newspaper, or some people have both, uh, find out there who sort of covers your industry or covers businesses like you, and then get their email address. And uh, with uh, radio and TV, you're probably looking for shows that spotlight businesses, mm-hmm. and you're going to want to reach out to the producer or booker uh, for them. And again, ask for the email address. It's yeah. a matter uh, of just then sending an email. I recommend at least quarterly, uh, just uh, introducing who you are, if you're a member of the local media, and you know what what you're pitching. And it might be. I've noticed a lot of trends in my industry talking about X, Y, and Z, and we would be a great example because we're utilizing that in our business uh, or whatever it is that you feel is newsworthy. And what you will find is you may not always get media pickup this way, but the more you do it, the more familiar you'll be. And after a while, you won't be contacting them. They'll be contacting you saying, we're working on a story and I'm trying to plug in a local company and I recall seeing some of your pitches in the past and I would love to see if you'd be interested in giving me a quote and maybe get included. Uh, And that's why you kind of tend to see, at least in my market, the same companies again and again in articles. When there's a charity event, it's the same company. When it's you know uh, HR struggles, it's the same company. And it's because they have relationships with the journalists. The journalists have them as top of mind, and it's just easier to plug them in. Okay. All right. So, so far, what you've mentioned is is do, doing, doing the hard work at first, and it's not really hard. It's just finding some email addresses and making the right connections. And so far, we haven't spent a penny yet. Correct. <laughs> Pretty cost effective, <laughs> if I should say right. myself. And I get the impression from what you're saying, too, is once we make those connections and we start con- you know, sending out releases, making announcements, um, even if we don't get responses, maybe the, our stories aren't covered, we should continue doing it. Not, Correct. You know, don't... Yep. Keep keep doing it because I guarantee after two years you will see results. And we're talking about eight emails over two year period. Okay. And 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 one of the things I will point out is you don't need a press release for this. This is just a few sentences about why uh, you would make a great story. Okay. So 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 are the connections we make with these people doesn't have to be a, a press release connection. We can just do an introduction email saying this is who we are. This is what we do. And, and maybe... And this is what I think would be a really good okay. topic right now for you to cover. Okay. All right. Perfect. Now, when it comes to crafting this, so let's say we do decide, you know, we want to, we've made those connections and we want to put out some press releases. Are there any tips for crafting a, a pretty solid press release? Any things we should or shouldn't do? <laughs> okay. So with the press release, the most important thing is what is it that you're going to write about so many people start with an idea and and then immediately go to writing and if it if the idea is mediocre you can have the best written mediocre press release about a mediocre subject and you're not going to get pickup Um, but you know the elements of a press release that really matter is the headline Um, you want it to be succinct but precise and really communicate to a journalist that, you know, this is what we feel is newsworthy. And again, the opening um, 
paragraph for the same reasons. It's it, you want to draw them in and have them read further. Yeah. Um, always include a quote. Um, quotes are the most overlooked mm-hmm. opportunities because if a journalist is looking at two potential stories and he's trying to determine what will make a better article. If one has an amazing quote, he can build a story around that. Yeah. You know, he can make that work. But if the other one's just flat and there is no quote or the quotes just, you know, blah, uh, it, it, you, you know, he's, he's more likely to move in a different direction. So, uh, I, I don't see enough people talking about the importance of a quote, but it can really save you and uh, really get you a, a really great story. Um, you know, going back to uh, the strategy part of things, yeah. it's so many press releases are new hires. Uh, you know, we've mm-hmm. got a new posi- you know, a new VP of HR. Yeah. And really, it's not very meaningful outside of maybe a trade publication in a local newspaper. So, I would say save your money and don't send something like that over the wire. Um, You could certainly post it on your website, maybe send it to your contacts yourself. But I would say the things that I spend money on sending, I want them to be important and newsworthy. And there are ways in which you can sort of, you know, try to, I always tell people, put yourself in the shoes of a journalist your job is really being a curator and a gatekeeper. Yeah. And you're trying to determine what is irresistible that you can share with your audience that they would really respond to. And you wrote a press release that's about a new product, for example, and all you did was list the product is available, here's the great features, and that's it. And from a journalist standpoint, that's not much yeah. to get the audience interested. What I always suggest in those cases is, uh, put use case studies in there. I mean, I I assume before anybody launches a product, they had people test it and some people got results. So put their experience in there and get a quote from them. And so a journalist can build a story around that because it's like, here's a new product. This is someone who utilized it. They saw these savings or results and here's a quote by them. That's, That's a story arc. And journalists like to write in the story arc. So the more building blocks that you can give them to build, you know, create a story, the more likely I think you're going to get picked up. And another thing with uh, small businesses is, uh, you know, being inspirational, sharing your story, uh, being authentic, vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Those work really well. I've had clients that I've coached through really embarrassing things that they've done and share it with a press release who got picked up in uh, Inc magazine. And, you know, it, I, I'm a hundred percent certain it was because of that. Cause that was like the lead into the article about yeah. them and it makes them so relatable. Uh, I think small businesses often feel like they have an imposter syndrome and they want to appear perfect and too large. But really, if, if you share that you're just a small company, journalists want a champion around you. Yeah. They don't like covering large, well-funded companies that can certainly advertise. You know, no one likes covering Microsoft and uh, Googles of the world, but they love, you know, uh, a little discovery they found on Kickstarter or something like that. Okay. Okay. And one, one, um, I love, I love what you're saying, especially about the being authentic, being real. I, I try to, you know, coach my clients on that as well. And it, and it's hard because you, it, it, that's a, that's years of perfectionism built into people thinking they have to put their best foot forward. I mean, we still put our best foot forward, but our perfect foot forward. And if it's not perfect, we should shy away from it. And it's, I think that hinders so many stories and so much progress if we just get out there. Um, and okay, so I'm, I'm I'm hoping you can dispel a, a a rumor or maybe some false advice I got years ago. When it comes to press releases, somebody once told me um, you want to take the work, uh, you know, take the work out of the journalist's hands and 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 write the press release as if you're writing the article. That way, they can just copy and paste it and, and move on with life. Right. Is so, there truth behind that? <laughs> there is a lot of truth behind that. Okay. Now, for example, your your larger publications like the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, they're going to write everything that they run. Okay. But there are a lot of busy local papers, um, the trade publications, yeah. that if they get a ready-made article that they only have to slightly right. tweak or, or change, uh, you've saved them a lot of time and journalists are being required to do more stories 
in less time than they used to. Mm. Uh, budgets have been slashed. You know, journalism is migrating online from print. And so they're, they're, they're people who are having to be very lean. So if you have something that is written almost like a feature article, um, try it and see how it does. It, it really is different for every industry, how they respond to it. But I, I do see it working and I, I, and I know why it works so well. Uh, it just usually doesn't get you the large publications. But for most people, you probably weren't going to get the large Wall Street Journal or New York Times article. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. All right. So, and then with, you know, obviously small business marketing, trying to save money as much as possible. Our social media platforms are primarily free unless we venture into paid advertisements. We can utilize Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn um, with all the free options they have. So do you recommend using social media to increase your chances of getting coverage when it comes to press releases? Probably not for getting media coverage, but if you have a social media following, these are potentially customers of yours. So sharing your press release and your articles that you get picked up to them is going to help to get them, convert them into customers. Uh, One of the things that we find when people get articles uh, published about them is they generally get a lot of sales, the conversion rate's really high. And I think it's because when someone reads an article, they get this warm feeling and, you know, it's almost like an implied endorsement and they Mm -hmm. want to do business with you. They don't open another window and say, can I get this cheaper on Amazon? You know, they're, they're really wanting to do business with you. And so they turn tend to be very loyal customers and, you know, uh, not really price sensitive in the way that others are. And so I think that you can do the same thing with your leads, whether they're in social media, your social media followers, uh, places like that. So uh, anytime they can read the same article by you sharing it, they're going to read that. And if they were on the fence uh, working with you, they're going to be more likely to work with you and do business with you in, uh, in the future as a result. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. So we can use... We can use social media to, like, if if somebody picks us up, share the article that they put on us, but not necessarily have that be the means of getting the coverage. Yeah, absolutely. Because you you have to look at it as you're not going to find journalists on social media, but if you have a community, you can communicate with that community and and get that out there. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then I want to circle back to... Um, making those connections with reporters and editors in our area. Um, I know we mentioned, you know, checking out their website, seeing if they get their contact information from them and starting that email list. Are there any other ways that we can connect with the with these uh, key people and point people that are getting these articles out there? For right. instance, so, like organizations they may be involved in that we could peek in on. <laughs> Right. So I always say, you know, check out what's in your community. It might be a chamber of commerce or might be some business groups. Um, Generally, uh, like in the Baltimore County area that I'm in, there is a tech council that meets and they invite journalists and other people to basically network with local businesses. And so uh, any opportunity like that, take advantage of it. Um, Other things is, you know, some journalists uh, are... uh, on Twitter for now. We'll yeah. see. But uh, you, you might want to see if some of your local media are on Twitter and follow them and interact with them as well uh, as the email um, route. Yeah. And I, and I, I would add to maybe uh, if they are on Twitter or Instagram, you know, wherever they may be is, is seeing if you can follow the type of articles that they pick up. Sure. If there's a pattern of, you know, different interests, you can potentially spin your own content to fit right. that person's particular interest and mold. And- right. And, an, and another thing that I, I, I've suggested in the past that's worked pretty well is if you're ever at a trade show and you meet competitors in different markets, write down the city that they're in and their name and then create a Google alert for them. And then when you see them get an article written about them, mm-hmm. you could go to your journalist and you don't tell them, hey, this this other market wrote about this. But what, what you do is say, I've noticed that there's been a trend talking about X and I feel that my company would be a really great example of that. I'd love to talk with you and share more. And, okay. uh, and maybe put a great quote in there. Go ahead and, and put a quote in there. You don't have to write the press release, but a really great quote uh, can really excite a journalist because they can build a whole story around it. 
I have to remember that it's not all about press releases are great, but it's not all about the press releases to make these connections with our local. It's really people. about the connections okay. and, and establishing those and working those. Yeah. And those don't really cost anything. Yep. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to come back to this now um, and maybe ask a little bit more details. If I were to approach you and, and you know, say I need some help with press releases, how can you help me? And then... Remind us how to connect with you, please. Okay. So uh, on e-releases, we have a lot of resources for people, how to write a press release, uh, you know, the, the strategy course that I'd mentioned that's that's free. I'm a big edu education guy, so I have lots of free resources for people. And we also will talk uh, by phone or chat, however you prefer. Um and it, you know, walk you through the process. And then once you're there, whether we write the press release or you do, uh, we can take a look at it at no charge, uh, whether you use us or not, and give you our feedback of whether we feel there's some improvements that could be made to it. And then just getting it scheduled and sent over the wire. Perfect. And, and, and while you were talking, I was reminded of something. Does it help or give any advantage if we include some type of media with our press release, like videos, images, does that right. increase the likelihood of being picked up? So I think video will, but currently I don't see it giving people an edge, but f photos definitely do. Okay. Uh, if a journalist, because so many are online yeah. and they've got two articles or press releases they're considering, one doesn't have images and one does, they know that they're online audience is going to interact more and appreciate a visual stimulation. Oh. And so having an, uh, a photo is going to give you an edge over someone that doesn't. Now, the type of photos is surprisingly not what you would expect. Okay. So the professional stock photo mm -hmm. is not really what they're looking for. And it's not what people respond to. Yeah. So candid pictures work really well. And I think that a lot of small businesses feel like, oh, it's got to be perfect. But really just a customer using your product that's a candid shot yeah. is exactly what they're looking for because that's what people respond to. Awesome. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. Great. And then your social media, e-press e, uh, e releases? E-releases e -releases. Is, is, is the website. Okay. And uh, uh all of our social media is on the lower right of the page. Uh, I have people who handle it for me, except for my LinkedIn. So that's about the only one I've figured out. But uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we love people connecting with us. We love people learning more, uh, even if it's just a, an education process to determine whether you think PR could be something that uh, you could utilize. I will say that, you know, every time that we've gone into a recession because uh, I've been around since the dot com crash and the real estate, uh, you know, bubble and and crash. Um, our business grew, mm -hmm. and I think it's because a lot of people know that PR is available to them, but they don't take advantage of it. It's like ah, I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this, but all of a sudden, you know, a recession hits, and your advertising budget went from you know. Uh, twenty seven hundred dollars a month to zero. You're like, what can I do with just four or five hundred dollars? Yeah. And PR is one of those things that if you get right, that four or five hundred dollars can generate many tens of thousands of dollars. And it's worth testing, tweaking, retesting, and trying to get it right. Perfect. So I love this conversation. I really appreciate your time. My goal here is to help small business owners save as much money as they can, but still get some good quality marketing. And so I feel like we're right on par with that, giving them some great advice. And, you know, press releases, can they be done on their own? Yes. But I feel like using somebody like the releases to ensure the best product is probably wise, especially for those bigger announcements they really want to get some good coverage for. So I appreciate your time, uh, your wisdom, your insights with us today. I hope to have bring you back again, you know, in the future for another conversation. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, everybody. You guys, stay tuned. Next month, we are going to jump on another topic as we round out the month of March. So stick around. And as always, Channer Consulting, we offer a free marketing consultations to every small business owner who has a marketing struggle. So take advantage of that. The link is in the description below. Until then, we'll see you in April.